Alright, so in this video, there's going to be a little bit of an introduction to um, Mustang. Um, Mustang is the first film that you're going to be doing as part of Component 2, Section A, which is Global Film, which you'll be doing a two-film study with Taxi Tehran. Um, for this film... All right, so in this video, I'm going to be doing a little bit of an introduction to the first film we're going to be studying for Component 2, Section A, which is Mustang. Mustang is um, the first film you'll do for this section, and which you'll also do a comparison with uh, Taxi Tehran as well. Um, <clears throat> so Section A, oops, for Section A, these are the different areas that we are going to be looking at. So in terms of the actual things we're going to study Mustang in regards to, it's just going to be your core study areas, which is the things that we study for every film that we do uh, in the AL Film Studies course, which is, first of all, your use of film form. So that's your cinematography, editing, mise-en-scene and sound. Um, the ability for those pieces of film form to create meaning and generate spectator response and finally <clears throat> the context behind the film as well so context meaning things like your um, political context social context institutional context historical context uh, cultural context as well so before we start looking at mustang a uh, little bit of an introduction to the director of the film, which is Denis Gamze Elgeven. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Maybe Elgeven, not sure. Um, she was born in Turkey, but she moved to France when she was six years old. Um, she studied at the, faith at the famous um, University of Le Femme, which is the National Institute for Professional Image and Sound in Paris. Um, her first two films were two short films, which is Mon Trajet Préféré and A Drop of Water. But Mustang was actually her first ever feature film. Um, it was co-written with Alice Winokur. She's not really directed a lot else other than Mustang, although she has done a few episodes of a few US TV shows. So she's done some episodes of the first, uh, The Handmaid's Tale, and Perry Mason as well. So she's not got a massively extensive back catalogue of films that she has made. Um, <clears throat> Mustang itself, it is it's set in Turkey, but it is not necessarily a Turkish film because the funding has come from a variety of different sources. Um, so it's part French, part German, part Turkish and part Qatari and it was distributed by Artificial Eye. Um, it is set in Turkey so the language is in Turkish and it did do very well critically when the film was released. Um, it won the Europa Cinema Label Award at the Cannes Film Festival, and it won a fair few César Awards as well, including Best First Feature, uh, Best Original Screenplay, Best Editing, and Best Original Music. The narrative of Taxi, Te of Taxi Tehran, of Mustang, is about five sisters who are growing up in a very conservative, isolated Turkish village. And it's about their, you know, their sort of um, liberation, I suppose. Their their you know journey from adolescence to maturity. Um, yeah, it's it's about you know the the issues within isolated Turkish communities. There you go, there's a little picture of a Mustang. You see here, he was also nominated for Best Foreign Language Film at the 2015 or 16 Academy Awards. I'm not sure which one it was. Um, I've already mentioned that he won that award at the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, I've already mentioned that it was nominated for a Best Foreign Language Film at the Oscars as well. Um, so it did, it did do very well. Um, it was very critically acclaimed when it was released. Uh, here you can see Denise Elgeven on the right hand side and Alice Winnicott on the left, the two co-writers of the film. Right, I'm going to butcher these pronunciations uh, and I guarantee you're probably not going to remember 
the names of the girls because they're very, very hard to remember. So these are the five sisters who the film follows. So you've got Selma, Eshe, Lale, Nur, and Sonne. Um, they, they each sort of have their own individual journeys as the film progresses, but for the main protagonist is Lale, who is the youngest out of the group. She's the one that's probably quite sort of like the, the feistiest of the sisters. Supporting characters, you've also got Errol, who's the girl's uncle. Uh, I should say as well, the sisters are all five orphans as well. So Errol is their uncle who's looking after them. They've also got their, oops, their grandmother as well. And you've got Yasin as well, who's probably one of the few decent male characters in the film. We like Yasin, he's pretty cool. Um, they're sort of your main characters that you need to know about, but for all intents and purposes, these people here are your protagonists, the sisters. <clears throat> so, the film's got a lot in common with a film called The Virgin Suicides, directed by Sofia Coppola. Um, it's similar in the sense that the film also focuses on a group of sisters who are confined to their house by their parents who are quite conservative, quite religious, I think, if I remember rightly. And it is about their, again, their their journey from adolescence to adulthood. Um, but it's also got a lot in common with Edieu Cli à la Femme, or um, And God Created Women. Uh, again, a French film, which is probably likely one of the films that inspired uh, Elke Van growing up in France, quite an iconic French film. And one of the things that um, the way that that film has got links with Mustang is due to the character that Bridget Bardot plays in that film. She's a character who is someone who is quite liberated. She is someone who is, you know, she is hedonistic, which means she sort of you know, lives life for, for, for pleasure, basically. And she is someone who is at odds with the conservative town that she is living in. And the the sisters in Mustang all go th have like a similar sort of um, clash with the more traditional conservative beliefs that the town that they're living in has. So it does have some thematic influence with uh, and God created women as well, but probably not quite as controversial as um, and God created women was compared to um, Mustang, certainly. Okay, so the aesthetics are really, really important in Mustang. Um, you could very well get a question that asks you about to talk about, sorry, how the aesthetics are used to create meaning and Mustang does that very very well. Um, one of the things that Mustang does try to do is create a very claustrophobic atmosphere in the society in which the girls are living in. Um, the girls quite early on in the film, this is not a spoiler, uh, are basically forced to stay in their house and they are only allowed to leave in very sort of strict, restricted circumstances. Um, so you do get the sense <clears throat> of the house being a prison for the girls. Um, so you will see shots of bars on the windows. You know, the lighting is incredibly, you know, dull and lifeless. Um, you also get a lot of very up close personal cinematography as well to heighten that sense of claustrophobia that you get when you're inside the house. Um, it is certainly there to symbolise the oppressive society in which the girls are living in because they are, you know, you could certainly argue that the house that the girls are living in is a metaphor for that area of rural Turkey because the girls are, you know, basically trapped in the society in which they live in. You know, the, the film tackles themes like um, arranged marriage, for one. Um, the mise-en-scene as well is also quite effective in 
how it uses to strip the girls of any sense of individuality. So, at one point early on in the film, the girls are forced to wear these matching. They're almost like almost like their uniforms, essentially. You know, they are dull, colourless, shapeless. You know, um, gowns essentially that have no sense of individuality to them at all. But it's all down to serve as you know symbolic of the oppression that these girls are living in so their house is very much seen as a prison but it is also seen as a prison for turkish society or certainly rural turkish society but you do also get a lot of emphasis on how much of a close bond the sisters have so you get a lot of you know tight proxemics where the sisters are almost, they're almost like they mould into one shape. This is a recurring technique to show how much of a close bond they have with each other. In fact, the poster, which I think might be on here, is it on here? No, it's not, never mind. The poster is quite an iconic shot as well, where it is a low angle shot of the girls all in a circle looking down at the camera. And again, that, that sort of, you know, closeness is something that's really emphasised in the film. You do also get a lot of contrasting elements to this as well. There are certain aspects of the film that deliberately create a binary opposite to that claustrophobic uh, set, a sense, to give a sense of freedom. <clears throat> so this is in the opening sequence here, where you get this gorgeous establishing shot of the girls playing on a beach with this you know, endless ocean in the background, almost like it's suggesting that, you know, there's endless opportunities, you know, endless possibilities that these girls can achieve. These establishing shots of gorgeous, you know, cityscapes and um, and sunsets, or some, I think it might be a sunrise actually, um, from the closing sequence of the film. The football match sequence as well, very bright, very vibrant, very happy, very joyous, but it is a huge contrast to what we see when the girls are at the house and that's a deliberate binary opposite that the film tries to uh, create um you do get a lot of the aesthetics as well are used to create a sense of patriarchal oppression um if you don't know what patriarchy means it's the idea that um the it's a male dominated system or society or a society that is ruled and controlled by men and for men and you certainly get the impression that one of the things that Ergoven is trying to say with the film is that these as these these rural communities in Turkey you know fuel patriarchal oppression so again we can see that in the aesthetics we get a lot of group shots of men together and women isolated or in this case girls isolated look at these two shots here you've got these group of men all sat down having food drinking something i don't know what it is say lemonade i don't know uh and you've got uh lale stood you know stood up away from the men isolated not drinking not talking to him look at the looming impressions that these you know dominant men have in this shot here look how much space they take up compared to the isolated figure of which sister is that i can't remember it is i think it's Nur. i think could be could be not, i'm not sure but look how much um space they take up in the in the uh, in the frame you know look how dominant they are it's almost like they're looming over the girl as well this is quite a uh, important shot as well from one of the girls wedding where even though it's her wedding and it's meant to be arguably the happiest day of her life she is still pushed to the background they've still got men in the foreground we don't even know these men are they're just random men but we've got the girl pushed to the background as well um again use of phallic symbology as well this shot is quite useful as well when you're when you look at the sequence because it's part of a shot reverse shot structure of the girls approaching this particular neighborhood where they're basically being paraded as potential brides for arranged marriages um <clears throat> so you get a lot of um aesthetics to present the idea of patriarchal dominance in the film as well so 
Um, the film wasn't without criticism, especially from uh, Turkey itself. Um, a lot of people have argued that the film is an Orientalist depiction of Turkey. Now, what Orientalism is, Orientalism is a big theory to sink your teeth into, but to to look at it really sort of loosely, it's the idea that um, people are looking at Eastern cultures through the perspective of a Westerner. So you could certainly argue, or you could argue that that is what Ergaven is presenting, because even though Ergaven is Turkish, she was born in Turkey, um, she grew up in France. So she is arg she has arguably been seen as a Westerner who is looking at um, the East from a Western perspective. Um, it's, you know, I'm not saying I agree with that, <clears throat> But it's what people have criticised the film for. This is a quote, uh, quite a scathing quote, from um, uh, Ali Arakan, who is a very, very well-respected Turkish film critic. And he said, I have a huge, huge problem with that film. You know me, I don't subscribe to any of this, ooh, it's Orientalist business, but that film is Orientalist as hell. How can you set a film in Inabolu and make the girls sound like they're the equivalent of SNL's Californians? The film is terribly unreal. Um, I have edited out the swearing as well, because he is quite scathing about the film. So he criticised the film for being a westernised idea of what Inabolu, which is the town of Turkey, is, or the, 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 the region the Turkey is set. What was that? I forgot what I said then. Uh, yeah, he argued that the film is a westernised idea of what you know Inebolu is like. <clears throat> um, you could also look at Edward Said's theory of the other as well. Um, this links in quite nicely with the whole idea of Orientalism as well, which is also something that was discussed by Edward Said. So the other, again I'm very I'm paraphrasing a lot here, is the idea that in literacy and culture, Western attitudes towards non-Western civilizations are often considered as others. And when we use the word other, we basically mean the word difference or unusual or contrasting with Western attitudes. Um, you know, something, attitudes that are, you know, like, like incompatible with Western ideologies. Um, so he argue, some people argue that what Mustang is doing is it's the way that Turkish society is represented in Mustang is is being represented as something other, something that is different, exotic, but altogether out of sync with dominant Western ideologies. Um, so that's basically it as a little bit of an introduction to Mustang. Um, there is going to be there is another video looking at the context behind Mustang as well. There's some really important stuff to know about in there before you watch the film as well. Um, if anything in this video hasn't made sense, then we will obviously go through it in a bit more detail in class. Um, or you can send me an email, come and see me, send either myself or Rob an email. But other than that, I will catch you next time.